a look at uh, Tulsa. They've run the ball for 47 yards. Uh, Oregon run the ball for 62 yards. Passing, of course, Tulsa only 144 yards. Oregon 181 yards, 243 yard total offense. Seven first downs apiece, three turnovers apiece. But the one turnover that doesn't show up there is the block punt. That's the difference in the ball game. If 10 to 10, block a punt, they get a touchdown off of. That stat doesn't show up there. And that's the difference in the first half of this football game, Steve. All right, Ed, we'll be right back here at the Independence Bowl in Shreveport. The second half of tonight's Independence Bowl is being brought to you by the Independent Insurance Agents of America and the many companies they represent. By the Eugene Springfield Convention and Visitors Bureau and Lane County Tourism. By Duracell, the copper top battery. Today's Duracell lasts up to 30% longer than the ones from a few years back. By Edge Shaving Gel, for less irritation, you've got the Edge. And by Oat Bake, the whole oat cereal with a crunchy baked taste. Welcome back to Shreveport, Louisiana, for the second half of the Independence Bowl game. Steve Grant and Ed Biles with you. The Ducks will kick off. Liam Hayes, who was a walk-on at Washington when the Huskies played Tulane here, kicks the ball off. And Willie Hill takes it across the 20 and down to about the 24-yard line before Paul Rodriguez from Sacramento, California, makes the tackle. First half, last four possessions. Look what happened. Look at all the action that they had. An interception, a punt, a block punt for a touchdown, and then halftime. Well, it also came strong there towards the end, especially defensively with the interceptions and the punt block. Look at that kind of mistletoe. <laughs> Let's go, Doug! Merry Christmas. Go, Oregon! Happy holidays for all of us here at Ms. Lou TV Sports. As Rubley goes back to pass, throws one out to the left side. That ball's caught by Malloy for a first down. Out of bounds at the 37-yard line of Tulsa. This is without Dan Bitson, their star receiver, who had 73 catches. And if you missed the stop of the broadcast, Bitson was in an automobile accident last week. Happily, he will recover. He might even get to play next year. So it's up to everybody else to take over. That poor young man hadn't been to the wrong place at the wrong time. Driver had an epileptic fit, came across, hit another car, and right into him. He had no chance to avoid that. A slot to the right with a single back for Tulsa. A semi-play action fake and then a screen. And for the third time in this game, a ball has been batted down, intended for three. And doing the honors was Bjarne Jensen. That hand up with a little delayed uh, pass out there would have been a completion that could have picked up pretty good yardage, but Jensen did a good job of getting his, getting his hand up. You see Rubley go back, makes a little play action fake, comes off of that, he wanted to go to the left side, comes back to the outlet man, but the ball was tipped. Let's get the interior line. Jerry Ostrowski, Gus Spanos, Todd McGuire, Wes McCaleb, and Chris Francher up front for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. We'll get the receivers in a moment. Second and ten. Quick out. McVay overthrows him. Whiteouts rotating in and out are McVay and Hill. Also Archie Malloy and Brian Thompson. Tight ends are Gary Treat and Bill Beaner. Of course, the running back Brett Adams and Mark Bruce. Ratcher sometimes gets in there. And Rubley is the quarterback. Well, they're right on what they've been averaging. Their season average is 221 yards passing. They were 117 yards right now. A lot of hardy fans are braving this cold weather tonight and seeing a good ball game on third and ten. Oregon defense digs in. Blitz. Shows blitz. Here they come. They throw one again, partially deflected by the Oregon Ducks. That time Andy Connor got his hand on it, knocked it away. A very good pass rusher, former high school decathlete. Well, they come with a blitz. You can see the linebackers on the inside. They're coming, kind of come from the outside. Extra defensive personnel in there. And Tulsa will be forced to punt, and Oregon should come out of this with pretty good field position. There's Obi back to receive the kick. He's had a fumble tonight, but he's also had some pretty good returns. He is dangerous. Belts will do the punting. Harry Obi, averaging eight and a half, 34 yard average on the punts tonight from Phelps. And Obi has to let this one bounce. It runs along the 35 and is finally down by Tulsa. 14-27 to go, third quarter of play. David Owens down to And those Tulsa cheerleaders 
excited because their team is up 17 to 10. Well, I think both both crowds, both Oregon and Tulsa, you know, you got a close football game, and it's been it's been interesting. It's been exciting with the reverses, and even though you have some turnovers, the interceptions, the punt block, people have the feeling that I think each side feels like our team is going to win this, and we're going to do something to make the big plays to get it accomplished. Now Musgrave takes him out of the huddle. First and 10 from his own 36. Lavelle, the only man in the backfield. Play action fake, throws it to the sidelines incomplete, intended for the tight end, Jeff Thomason. Thomason caught 12 passes for 124 yards. Former swimmer. They use those tight ends, Burton and Thomason and Teff. They used all of them in their offensive plans. They kind of mix things up. I think it's very difficult for a defensive team to get their hand you know, they go to Obi, they go to Anthony Jones, they go to Ritzig, they go to Hargan, they use those tight ends. Now they've got Lavelle on the wing to the right. Let Barry in the eye, the rather single back. And Lavelle goes in motion on second and ten. Musgrave over the middle, intended for Lavelle, and almost intercepted. Well, that ball was thrown a little bit behind Lavelle. He didn't have a chance to catch that one because he was going across to the to his left, and the ball was just really thrown behind him. Let's talk about the interior linemen so we don't have to do it only when they hold or something. The center is Colin Hall for Oregon. The guards are Todd Kunzman and Chris Yusko. The tackles David Collinsworth and Kurt Dykes. And Oregon Ducks one of seven on third down. This has not been their forte. Kurt Dykes is a good player. He's probably the most talented offensive lineman they've had since Gary Zimmerman who's playing with the Minnesota Vikings up there now. Good time for Musgrave. They got a first down there as Obi takes it into Tulsa territory to the 47. Mark Palmer makes the tackle, helping him out Mike White. Again, Musgrave showing great poise back in that pocket. And again, you just talked about the offensive line. They did an excellent job of giving him pass protection. Here's the career passing situation. As you can see, he's only some 500 yards uh, away from Dan Fouts. And next year, he'll be passing both their records, assuming he stays healthy. Miller, of course, the quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons. Not bad for a kid who was smart enough to be accepted into the Ivy League, but decided he was going to play football at Oregon, coming out of Colorado. That's one in the middle, and there's Burton, who has not been able to catch one tonight, made a good play there and took it down to the 39-yard line of Tulsa, short of the first down. Well, they're working against the zone now. They took the time. That time, Merton stayed at the line of scrimmage like he was going to block and stay in for pass protection. He waited till the zone dropped there a little bit deep. Then he came off the line of scrimmage, and Musgrave just got it into his hands. Right of Eagle Point, Oregon. He can run after he can. Obi and Hargain, the wideouts. High formation. Tulsa was Richard Wales, a junior from Tulsa, and a transfer student from Northeast Oklahoma A&M. A great junior college. They had some champions. Well, there's a, there's a shows you right now with a rushing attack, what they like to do in their victories, 200 yards a game. Losses, 96, and might be only at 62. Another first down at the Tulsa 37. A draw play. Lavelle having to go outside. Picks up a bit of yardage and gets down to the 31-yard line before Dan Terabrella catches him from behind. I like the pursuit of the Tulsa defenders. They don't stop coming. Yeah, they really do. They're, well, both teams have got great pursuit, but I think Lavelle showed you there why he's a, such a productive run. He turned to play there. It looked like it was going to be stopped for maybe a yard or two gain. Now watch this. This is a draw. There's nothing inside. Now he tries to go to the outside. There he misses. Now watch him make, him miss. Watch him make the defensive back miss. Lenny really Williams forces him to miss the play, and he picked up that yardage on the end. That's why he's the all-time school rusher. Second and three, pick up seven. A little confusion on the defense. Moore tells him. Play action break. Musgrave still has the ball. Gets away from big trouble. He's finally got it by a host of Tulsa Golden Hurricane players, and he's short of the first down. Mike Rawson really chased him around. Well, I think he wanted to go to the backs coming out of the backfield, but they couldn't get through the line of scrimmage. You see, now there's a double team there. You see him make the fake in there to Barry. Now, Barry wanted to go on downfield to be a, a receiver, but he got knocked down with, within that group. Now, he scrambled around looking downfield for folks. Doesn't open up. Finally, he has to scramble around. 
He knows he's going to get hit. He should just want to hit point down. John Shaguar came in, and now he goes back out again as they add Mark Palmer to the secondary in the pre-safety situation on third and one. In motion goes Obi. Lavelle trying to slant over right tackle. He may be stopped short. According to Eric Barr's number eight, blue they were. Boy, it'll be awfully closer. Yeah, it's going to be close. It'll be an interesting call at this stage. Uh, it would be, I think, Rick Brooks will probably go for it if they didn't make the, and they did not make the first down. That was going for maybe about a half yard loss. Now, that was Oregon's bread and butter play. Now they're off tackle play. They take that tight end and kind of release him off the line of scrimmage to try to block the strong safety. Then the fullback will try to block that defensive end as the lead blocker. But it wasn't there that time. Tulsa did a great job defensively against that play. Muscle to muscle. Two tight ends, extra defensive linemen. Here we go, LaBelle having to get outside. They can't get it. No first down. Eric Bars, the cornerback, stopped him, and Oregon turns the ball over to Tulsa on down. Well, those two great short yardage defensive plays. They tried to run the same to get there. That was their bread and butter play. And when you take the bread and butter play away from the team, you do good things. 10-17 to go, third quarter of play at the Independence Bowl in Shreveport. Tulsa leads Oregon 17-10. Today, you need all kinds of insurance. Homeowner's insurance, car insurance, business insurance. No matter what you want to insure, see your independent agent. Look for the symbol of your independent agent in the yellow pages. Look a new message. C, come on over. A, alone. N, now. O, E, etc. Oh, canoe, canoe? The cologne by Dana. Wear it. She'll get the message. It's time for God's people to come out of the churches and change America! The freedom to say and think what we believe, to express our individuality and diversity. That's our birthright. And it's insured by this document. Join us and the National Archives in celebrating the 200th anniversary of the Bill of Rights. If you're a Tulsa opponent, fourth down, the odds are against you. All for seven by the opponents of the Golden Hurricanes, and Oregon just became number seven. So Rubley and the Golden Hurricane players take over on their own 28, leading 17 to 10. 10 17 to go, third quarter. Is it a busted player or a bootleg? Rublin rolling along the right. And finally, hauled down by Rory Deering. What do you think? That was a busted play. No bootleg designed that way. Well, maybe I thought it was sloppy, but uh, <laughs> probably <laughs> busted however you want to look at it. It was not designed that way. No. Come up with any edge if you want, Steve. The play was not designed to be run that way. Yeah, Rublin's checking. Yeah, you see right Rublin right now talking to the to to Bruce. To Bruce saying, hey, you were supposed to go the other way or whatever. That was not a design play. I wonder if they ever tease Bruce and say, hey, this isn't Canada. The field is an extra wide. We don't have 110 yards here. You know, the young man came down from Alberta to play. Edmonton, I think. He was up for what they have as equal to the Heisman Trophy for the college stars up in Canada. Second and six. He did pick up four on the play. There is Bruce. Bruce is tripped up in the backfield, picks up a little bit more yardage. Making the stop was Peter Brantley, but uh, originally he was tripped up by Joe Farwell, a freshman redshirt from Los Gatos, California. Yeah, that's a good play here. Uh, Bruce had just messed up the play before, and he come right back and give the ball to him so he, so he gets right back so he didn't have a chance to think about the foul up that he made. That's a good quarterback in there, good play calling by the offensive coaches of Tulsa. And Bruce averages over four yards of carry. So nine minutes exactly to go, third quarter of play. Dylan Malloy, the wideout, single back, third and three. Wide open is Malloy, and I'll tell you what, Daryl Reed held on for dear life, or this is going to be a blowout by Tulsa. They almost had another touchdown, but Malloy held on to that jersey, and under no circumstances would he let it go. Boy, he really did. Otherwise, it was going to be adios for a pretty good gainer. Yeah, Reed really made a saving tackle. Good pass protection up front. Just 
simple out pattern. He went down, broke to the outside, and right there, he just grabs him. If he breaks away from that jersey within a long game, look at this. Look at down through the years there, the single season passing records. Including David Rader, their number 10. His coach in here, Blayton, the first play independence ball, as Adam gets the first down at the 42. And one thing about Adams, he's one of those tight backs that as the game wears on, he gets stronger and stronger and stronger. It just seems like he plays, all those kind of backs seem like they go stronger as the game They're in great condition. They're built low to the ground. They're 225 pounds. You have to wrap your hands and arms around them. You know, they got a, really got a family plan. Their mom and dad come to see every game. Every kid he plays, either the mother there or the father is there. It's great from the family standpoint. Edmond, Oklahoma. Adam thinks of 41 yards to go into sixth all time on the Tulsa running back. Now there's the boot line. There's the keeper, the fake. And there's Rubin. He completes the pass to Beener, the tight end. Way short of a first down, but he's out to about the 35-yard line of Oregon. Well, it took a play that was really defense well by Oregon and turned it into a gainer because he had presence of mind to look around and look around. He really wanted to go downfield with the play. I think you see Ruby looking over the side. There it again. We didn't get a chance to talk about that. And Bill Anderson had 3,465 yards. Jerry Rome, 64, had 2,807. They looked at the three seasons of Ruby has had. In tenth place, of course, that's the old coach, Dave Rader. He was here when the Tulsa team lost to McNeese State in the first game. Yeah, they got some quite, some, some quite a few athletes come out of Tulsa. Now. On second and five, the pitch goes to Adams inside the Oregon 30, a first down. And again, Adams, that, like that Earl Campbell type back, that as the game wears on, they pick up much more yardage. It's just a toss sweep where quarterback turns, pitches it back there to Adams, lead blocker in front of him. You see Gus Spanos out leading that play. See Gus Spanos getting that block right there. Oh, what a good block that was. That's one of those roach blocks where he pinned the guy right down on the ground. Adams, 17 carries for 50 yards. Howard Twilley came out of Tulsa. Drew Pearson. How about old oh, Steve Largent breaking all those passing receiving records? Glenn Dobbs, the old timers will remember him. Slot to the left. A wing to the right, another play fake, a drill up the middle, it's complete, and it is short of a touchdown. His knee touched down just on the one-yard line, and a nice catch by Gary Treat, the tight end. They do go to their tight end. Oh, boy, that's just down the seam of the zone. This Treat just comes right off the line of scrimmage, going to run right down. The Oregon's playing a zone coverage. You see Treat running right straight down the field. The safety tries to get over. And Ruben did a good job of putting the ball away from the side that the free safety is coming. You see the safety coming in the picture right there? You see the other defensive back. Now that just splits the seam of that zone, puts it down on the one-yard line. And now Bratcher, number 39, comes in to join Adams in the backfield. They're going to try to plow in for another one. They did earlier for the first touchdown. Here's Adams. Oh, the duck wall stays right there. The duck wall really stopped him. Derek Horton, the safety, came flying in. Well, he's down. But someone's down underneath the pile. That's when, watch the defensive lineman get down low. Watch him there. Well, this is the previous play. This is the pass play. Watch him throw it. Good adjustment by Treat, who turned back to the inside to make that catch. You were talking about getting down low. Andy Connor, 47, was the guy who really submarined under there. So it'll be second and goal from the one for Tulsa. They lead 17 10, 5.55 to go, third quarter. And just sliding through his Adams for his second touchdown of the game. Brett Adams has nine touchdowns on the year, and Tulsa goes up again, now 23 to 10. Watch the offensive line block down. Watch them all block to the inside here. They're coming up. See the coming down to the inside? Blocked down to the inside. He just slides right off of those blocks and knifes it into the end zone. The defensive cornerback would have to come in and make that play, and that's pretty tough for him to stop a 225-pound back on a short yardage situation like that. Tulsa fans braving some slick driving to get here from Tulsa. Very happy that their team is up now, and they'll try to increase the lead. David Feast, who's 29 for 29 on his point after touchdowns. The point is good, and Adam, by the way, has carried 19 times for 51 yards and two touchdowns, and that's why his team is up 24 to 10. We'll return with more third quarter action at the Independence Bowl game after this word from your local station. Right now, strike a hot clearance deal with your local Ford dealer. Get big savings on America's hottest selling cars and trucks. The savings are big. The selections are huge. The time to buy now. The Men's Warehouse spotlights a world-famous designer. 
When we bought this suit at the Emporium, it cost four forty. At the men's warehouse, the same designer suit with the same label is three thirty-five. I guarantee it. Motorsports Custom Auto Detailing in Mountain View will make your car's showroom new again. But don't confuse real auto detailing with a simple inside-outside wash. Look, Motorsports Custom Auto Detailing in Mountain View will do all this and everything for the incredibly low price of only $119. Mention TV36 will clean your engine free. A $32.95 savings on top of the low price. Protect the resale value of your car. Take it to Motorsports Custom Auto Detailing on El Camino in Mountain View. One block north of San Antonio. Call 415-948-2900. Steve Grant and Ed Miles with you at the Independence Bowl, where Tulsa now owns a 24-10 lead over Oregon. That last drive was 11 plays, 72 yards, took 427. Shreesport, they're, they're right. The uh, wind show's got to be down in single digits. Well, I think the interesting thing, Dave Brader has been in a bad format all week long. During the last two or three days, all you read in the paper was how bad they were and how they didn't think they had an opportunity and without Benson. And, of course, he disciplined Luke, the, the linebacker. But all of a sudden, they're sitting with a 24-10 win. I think his team has responded to the, to the, to the fact uh, that uh, maybe their coach was putting them down a little bit and they felt like they had a little more pride. There's the kickoff. And Oldham takes it at the 15-yard line. Up the sideline, knocked down, out of bounds at about the 30. They sold over 44,600 tickets. Greg Jones made the tackle. And there are 30,333 brave souls here braving the weather. And it's a real credit to not only the schools bringing their contingents, but also to the city of Shreveport and Bossier City, Louisiana, their neighbor city. Credit to those 30,000 some fans that did come out here this evening. You, you better believe it. it. It's, it's cold. There was a flag on that play. We had some flags on special teams. Let's hear referee Al Ford. After the play is over, personal foul against the blue team, 15 yards, first down, 10. First penalty against Tulsa. Uh, that's the first, or maybe you might say, dumb play that Tulsa made this evening. Those are the kind of plays that all of a sudden can put a team in the United team. you got a team now that hadn't been playing well, making some mistakes. So you give them an extra 15 yards and let them start on the 45-yard on the line instead of being backed up. So the Oregon Ducks start first and 10 on their own 46. Musgrave, the quarterback, from the eye. Down by two touchdowns. And there's Barry out of the backfield. And midfield into Tulsa territory, just short of the first down at the 45. Ball squirts lose. Well, that's I think they're, a key turnover. Did the ground I think, cause they're it? I think they're calling the ball down. I think it'll be right up where he was originally. I don't think they caused it, called the fumble. You see the up official there marking the spot and moving right back to there. There's Barry turning up, turning the ball a little bit loosely. Oh, he fumbles. Could have been a fumble. No instant replay from the collegiate level, so it goes as a official ruling that his knee was down. Russian and Bennett were there for defense. Big thing that Musgrove, he has to have patience. They're playing a lot of zone coverage. He's got to take those underneath patterns to be, be very content with making seven, eight, nine, ten yards and hope that maybe one of his backs will break them along one off of it. Barry gets about three catches a game on the draw play. There's Latin Barry. Nothing there, so he's got to make his own and he just can't do it. And he was lucky. He actually lost a couple of yards. Eric Bennett was in there, the senior from Tulsa, and also northeastern Oklahoma. A &M. Well, second down and two. I think Tulsa alertly was maybe anticipating that they wouldn't put the ball up in the air. They might run something like that, and they stuffed that draw play. By the way, that mascot, that Oregon Duck, Oregon is the only school that has a Walt Disney sanctioned drawing for their mascot. Donald posed for that. Sailor Duck, only one Walt Disney ever did. Walt's originally from Kansas City. Play action fake. Musgrave closing in on him. Gets it away and completes the pass to Reitzig. Almost got loose for a big gainer, but he does get inside the 30-yard line before Chris Briscoe makes the tackle, a junior from Wichita, Kansas. Well, that was a big play from Oregon's standpoint. They needed that first down. They didn't have to turn the ball back over to Tulsa at this stage. Keep the drive alive. Good play by Ritzig, who just uh, Take a look at Musgrave now. They actually fake. He threw off that front foot. He threw that ball off that front foot. A lot of times they have a pretty good zip on it, and he'll get down to that receiver. Then he goes to Hargain. He goes to Ritzy. He goes to Merton. He goes to Obi. He picks the things up. There's a reverse pass off of it. And there's Obi with lots of time, but good coverage downfield. Throws falling away from the ball, and it's batted away by Eric Bars. 
And I'll tell you, any ex-quarterback was that you can't fall going there on the wrong foot. Well, I think the thing, the thing, another thing that happened on that play, that Tulsa was in a zone, and they've been beaten by the reverse a couple times. They were just sitting back there. They did a good job of trying to set it. Ritzy tried to set the play. See, Ritzy's trying to set the play up there now. But Tulsa was back there. And anticipating on the play like that, that maybe your receiver would get wide open in the end zone. Tulsa, good job defensively. And a good call play. Good time to call that play on first down. That's the third time they've given the ball to Hobie the first time he's passed it. Second and ten from the 28 of Tulsa. And Rich said he wouldn't put a thing special in now. Nothing game. exotic like that. <laughs> 342 to go, third quarter of play. Rolling out, going back the other way. Derek LaBelle gets through. Not quite enough, and boy, is he gang tackled right there. Sidney Prince, the first one to hit him. Also, Derek Williams in on the play. Boy, good play by Sidney Prince. Now, this is a screen pass. He rolled out to his right. He's going to throw the screen pass back over here to the left. But look at under control. You can see number 40 in there, Derek Williams. He gets blocked in the back. And watch Prince come into the play right there to make that tackle. I'll tell you one thing, Sidney Prince has been given the opportunity to play tonight because of disciplinary measures, and he has taken that challenge and done well with it. He set up on the top. He had to have a hero come from someplace. David Owens and Camille Wright also playing on defense for Tulsa, doing a good job on third and eight. Musgrave rolling, rolling. Got a man. And did he catch that ball? Yes, he did. Nice play by Terry Obey. Boy, he held on to it. And he made a great adjustment in that route. He was rolling out, and Obey was working back to the inside. When it wasn't there, he planted his foot and broke back to the outside. That was how he got open on this play. Originally, he was working to the inside. You see there, Jane make the move and break to the outside. And good job. And see, now he realized how important it was to look that pass in and make the catch and pick up the first down. Lee Durham in on the play that time on first and 10 from the 14. Oregon Durham, 24-10 up the middle of the goal. Lavelle inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. Derek Lavelle. Got a great drive going. This is a, this is an excellent drive. Mixing up the passes, mixing the run in there, using different receivers. Go to Rudzik, go to OB. Now they got the ball running inside. Excellent drive by Oregon. Bill Holmes on the tackle. There's Lavelle by games. You see the first six weeks, and then they made the change of the offensive line and settled it down. And boy, does that help him back. He really wanted to have a big night. He needed 123 yards to become a thousand-yard rusher. Well, at this point, he's got a chance to get him. Meanwhile, Musgrave, lots of time, into the end zone. Obi planted away. Lee Durham, the junior. Well, that was a pass that he needed to drill. He kind of just laid that one out there, maybe not realizing the defensive back could recover, but an excellent recovery by Bars on the, on the play to get to the ball. He was open for a while, but that was a pass that Musgrave really needed to drill it in there. Good stats there, 16 to 35, 250 yards, four yards. Looking at the sideline, of course, the coaches are giving him signals on the sideline. Offensive coordinator Mike Bellotti signaling things into him. He also coaches the quarterback, so they got great. Uh, and Oregon's taking a timeout because there have been some substitutions that Musgrave was not aware of. And so with 2.10 to go in the third quarter of play and Tulsa leading 24 to 10, we'll return to the Independence Bowl after this. Come here. Closer. Don't see any dandruff, do you? Used to have it. Boy, did I ever. So I tried Head & Shoulders. Then I tried my husband, Selson Blue. He was right. Blue is better. Blue is better. Selson Blue. Test shows Selson Blue relieves dandruff flaking better than Head & Shoulders. And doctors recommend it number one. More than Head & Shoulders, Denorex, and Tegrin combined. For me, there's no doubt about it. Blue is better. Selson Blue. Normal, extra medicated, and extra conditioning formulas. Got a cold? Gotta get Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine. It works. It's fast. Alka-Seltzer Plus. The fizz works fast. Shreveport, Louisiana. An unspoiled business environment. A uniquely productive workforce. And an average temperature of 65.9 degrees. Where Louisiana's right to work is not only the attitude of Shreveport's local governments, but also the law of the state. Shreveport is blending its established petroleum and agricultural economy with today's new and modern industry, and it's working. Discover the many other benefits of the city in the center of a vibrant industrial and commercial market, Shreveport. 
Oregon cheerleaders trying to inspire the Ducks to get on the board. They trail by two touchdowns. Letton Berry is the sole back. They've got Lavelle in a slot. Now he goes in motion. The block by Berry. Musgrave into the end zone. Right to touchdown, Oregon. Well, Oregon needed that. What a great route by Rutzig. He went way down to the inside, then came back to the outside. Musgrave did a great job of just rolling out there. There's a little bit of fake. Now, he's rolling out to his left. All the while, Rutzig has moved like he was going inside, and then he breaks back to the outside. Watch him catch the ball. Good concentration. Gets, a, gets that foot down. There's a little bit of play action pass. Again, good blocking by the offensive line and giving plenty of time to throw the ball. Throws it off the front foot this time. Kind of a running motion. Completion. That gets him back into this game. Musgrave now 17 for 24. And that touchdown... Cuts into the Tulsa lead. Here's the extra point for McCallum, and it is good. 24-17, our score. 2.05 to go. Third quarter of play. We'll be back at the Independence Bowl right after this. Today, Americans need all kinds of insurance. Homeowner's insurance, car insurance, business insurance, health and life insurance. Independent agents represent several companies, not just one. So they have more policies to choose from. No matter what you want to insure, your independent agent is the place to go. Look for the symbol of your independent agent in the yellow pages. You're more than one company agent. We both have colds. Why is he bouncing around like it's a great morning anyway? Well, I'm so <coughs> tired and cranky and headachy, I can't even get started. Why? Because last night when he said, let's take NyQuil so we can have a good morning, I said, why? What's the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, achy, stuffy head fever so you can rest medicine got to do with morning, silly? He took it. I took these. <coughs> why? NyQuil. It's also the bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, fully rested, so take it at night and have a good morning medicine. These are oats. Uh, something you've been hearing quite a lot about lately. But while some cereals turn oats into processed oat flour, new oat bake from Kellogg's uses only whole oats. Then we simply bake them with nuts, raisins, and spices for the first cereal that combines the goodness of whole oats with the goodness of baked taste. New Kellogg's Oat Bake, the whole oat cereal with the crunchy baked taste. We're not that macho to, to you know, brave windshields of nine. <laughs> hey, it's cold. I got gloves on. I'll look, I got one glove on and one hand in the pocket keeping it warm. Windows wide open, and the kickoff goes to Hill. Picks it off the bounce at the 11-yard line. And his bump loses the ball out of bounds. Fortunately for him, or Oregon would have a real good chance to tie this thing up. It's 24-17. to Darrell Singleton of the Ducks made the stop. Musgrave okay. with a nine-yard pass to Reitzig. There's the scoring drive. That was a great drive by Oregon. He mixed the ball up. Good job of passing. He gave the ball to Ritzig. Gave the ball to some of the other receivers. Four rece the receptions by Ritzig for 96 yards uh, and one touchdown. But that was a great drive that Oregon needed. Now it's going to be interesting to see how Tulsa reacts, how they come back now. And you know that Brooks was sending in a lot of offensive linemen to keep them fresh. Kaanapu was in there. Gadsden, Tattersall, they were getting rotated with the regulars. Now it's first and 10 at the 23 for Tulsa. Rootley, the quarterback. In motion goes Malloy. This is Bruce. Down he goes. Lots of ducks there, including Andre Williams, number 36 from Oxnard, California. Took over in the spring and fall practices. He was a special teams guy. They weren't sure who would play that position of the right uh, end, but he came on strong. Well, the other thing right now, they're right in front of where all the Oregon fans are at, down in that, that corner down there, and they're getting an inspirational look from, the, from their fans. Second and 11, minute and a half to go. Third quarter of play, 24-17 Tulsa. They lead, they have the ball. Slot to the left. Action fake. Brooklyn just gets it away, throws it, nearly picked off. That pass was sent pretty high in the direction of Ron Beasley, a backup tailback. Overshot him. He had well, to get rid of it quickly. Well, he did because he brought Derek Horton on a free safety blitz. Now, Horton had gotten a couple sacks already this year. He came on that free safety blitz. He was right in Rupley's face, which forced him to throw that ball itself on him because he wanted to get it over the top of Horton's hand. 
Peter Brantley also came in and made pressure. He's their leading sack man with ten and a half. You almost get the feeling that the momentum may be shifting right now to Oregon in, in this Oregon in this game. The wind has been goofy. It's blowing in both directions, but if there's any edge, it's to Tulsa right now in that direction. Treat the tight end in motion. Flags all over the place, throwing to the sidelines, incomplete. Well, you're going to have, I think, some illegal movement or motion. You know, it looked like Treat was doing one of those jitterbugs that you see on the uh, middle of the night commercials for those late set of 12 records, 999, 99, 99. Yeah, those Gus Panos and uh, Gus Panos and uh, Jensen kind of squared off at each other, but the original penalty, I believe, is going to be against Tulsa. Let's hear Al Ford. Illegal procedure against the offense had two men moving at the same time. Penalty declined at fourth down. Boy, Oregon's fired up. You can see that. And there's been some taunting by the white uniform defenders. You have a feeling that maybe Rich Brooks had a little man-to-man -man talk with his team at halftime about that big favorite position they came in here and took this team a little too light. Field to their pride. Danny Phelps will punt. Back will be Obi. Minute 12 to go, third quarter. A seven-point lead for Tulsa. Coming after this one. Look at the white uniforms on that line. No flag. They almost jump. He gets it away. And he does get it to roll. Out of bounds at the 43-yard line of the Oregon Ducks. Good punt by Phelps. Joe Dan McAdams there on the coverage. Oregon's still going to start off in good field position. They're up on the 43-yard line. They're just coming off that drive where they went down there 72 yards and put points on the board. Now they're coming right back and get the ball three plays and out, so to speak. And now their offense is, is really jacked up about what they might do right now. Yeah, and you know, this half, Oregon has not started with a penalty after they get the ball back. So <laughs> that makes a difference. Straight in the second quarter. Well, we have the opportunity. I want to, before this game gets on too long, we'll thank our stat crew and the fellas here in the booth in just a moment. Hand off goes to LaBelle. Can't get outside because a good play by Greg Jones, the cornerback on the right side who makes the tackle after about a yard game. Greg Jones, another one of those juniors. Great speed for a defensive back. He stayed at home, did his job. Dave Redder got a little more worried look on his face over that sideline right now. That's, that's a worried lines, look. Worried lines yeah, that's right. That's, that's right. <laughs> started but I do want to mention Glenn Martin and Daryl Reisinger on our stats Dale Kaiser our spotter Steve Murray our stage manager great job John Manassas also aiding in the booth as we have second and eight on a play action fake must great pump fake now he throws and he completes the pass to right sig and down goes right sig as Lenny Williams hits him at the 45 of Tulsa oh, what a great job though Dykes Cusco and Hall and Kuzman and Collinsworth did the line have out. Look at all the time he's got. He's sitting back in a rocking chair. He's looking. He avoids one person. And all the while, again, Breitzik works to get open. This receiver does an excellent job of working himself to get in position the quarterback can get the ball to him. Probably having his career night this evening. Breitzik and Hargain have both had a lot of catches as the third quarter winds down. So we have played three quarters at the Independence Bowl game on the score. Tulsa 24, Oregon 17. Stay with us. Hi, Neil. No, we're still in Lane County. Soon as we got here, I caught something. It's not serious. I just don't feel like working. Uh, Sharon's a little anxious about it, but it can't hang on much longer. I hate to drag this out. Yeah, it sure is a mess. I'll drop you a line, okay? Visit Lane County, Oregon, and we'll give you a good excuse to stay and play. Call for a free visitor's guide. The canoe message. C, come on over. A, alone. N, now. O, E, etc. Oh, canoe canoe? The cologne by Dana. Wear it. She'll get the message. Today's Duracell battery keeps punching into the final round because it lasts up to 30% longer than the one from a few years back. Duracell. You can't top the copper top. Discover Oklahoma. Discover Oklahoma. Discover Oh, 
Oklahoma? Call 1-800-652-6552 for your vacation guide. Back at the Independence Bowl in beautiful Shreveport, Louisiana, but I want to tell you, Oregon and Oklahoma, two states that can be very proud how great they are. As Oregon gets the ball to Lavelle, and he picks up a couple of yards. We were talking about the passing, remember? Reitzig, five receptions, 112 yards. Hargain, four receptions, 84 yards, and a touchdown. Each has a touchdown. They really have. Well, Reitzig's best game this year was against Brigham Young. He had seven catches for 136 yards against Brigham Young. You can see how he came on as the season progressed there on that uh, graphic. Move. See Musker trying to give that single speed things up. We've got to get that play in there, get it called, get up the last scrimmage. We don't need that five-yard penalty for delay of the game. In the third quarter, Tulsa had 75 yards in offense, Oregon 127. Corbell, big hole, up the middle on a quick opener, and he's down to the 20-yard line of Tulsa. Oregon trailing by seven points. Mike White made the tackle with Dan Terabrella. Again, the momentum is switch. You can get that feeling. You feel like the, the, the Oregon offensive line is picking up their block. Take a look now. Watch him cut back behind that. Now, there's the first play that maybe Prince made a mistake. He jumped around that block to the wrong side. Instead of playing into the blocker and then sliding one way, he jumped and took one way. And you can see the move that Lavelle made cutting back off of that play. That's exactly what happens when a linebacker goes one way, the back cut off that block. First and 10 from the 20 for Oregon. Musgrave still with the ball. Outside to Lavelle out of the backfield. To the 15, to the 13, and bumped out of bounds by Craig Jones. Well, they set the screen pass up, did a good job of setting it up. Looked like it might even be more yardage than that. Whack attack. Season greetings from Freeport. Now they're watching up in the great Northwest. You can be sure in this close game with the Ducks trailing the Golden Hurricane 24-17. Well, my dad said I gave my son money to come to look like that on TV. That's painful. Not from the weather, which is very cold. Hargain and Reitzig. I split I back formation for Oregon on second and three. Lavelle, another one up the middle. Down inside the five-yard line before Palmer trips him up. Oh, we're having success now. See, a little bit of a counter. He starts one way. Now watch him hand it back that way. He got the flow of the back. And again, you can see Prince get locked up inside. See the fine block by number 60, Chris Yusko, who did the job coming down in there and picking that middle linebacker. They're getting the middle linebacker flowing one way. They're cutting back against him, and the blockers get in position. And I think a little bit of Prince's maybe inexperience is, is showing on this drive. Two tight ends for Oregon on first and goal. They have a man on the wing from the five-yard line trying to tie this thing up. Up the middle they go. And for Oregon, Dondre Bosley getting some action, the senior. Again, I think the other factor that they use some of their second offensive line when they put that first offensive line, they are beginning to wear. It looks like they're wearing Tulsa's defensive line down a little bit because they're bigger. Oregon has a much bigger offensive line than Tulsa has defensive line. Bosley, by the way, who you see coming out, is playing with that cast. He heard it in the Oregon State game, the last game, but he's a veteran. They wanted to utilize him. On second and goal from the two. Malo Kelameni is into the game now. 28. A keeper for Musgrave. He'll walk right in unmolested. Shifting the Tulsa defense the other way, and Oregon's one point shy of tying it. Kanapu with a great, great block, number 79. Musgrave did a great job of looking downfield there, seeing him with the opening. Once he saw the opening, he didn't know he had to go very far to get it into the end zone. And again, that was a great drive by Oregon. The last two times they've had their hands on the ball, they have had excellent drives, mixed up plays well, inside running, outside, outside passing, just two super drives. It's too early to go for the two-point conversion with 12.28 to go in the game, so Oregon will try the extra point, McCallum. With Pete Nelson holding the backup quarterback. And that baby's good. We are tied at 24. One of the best Independence Bowl games in history. 12.28 to go. We'll return to Shreveport after this. Holidays from all of us at Angel Soft and Georgia Pacific. You'll never guess what we're baking for breakfast. It's made with whole oats.
plus raisins, nuts, and spices. It's a cereal. New Oat Bake, a nutritious new oat cereal from Kellogg's. It's the only whole oat cereal that's baked for a rich taste you won't find in any other oat cereal. New Kellogg's Oat Bake, the whole oat cereal with the crunchy baked taste. because there are no unimportant parts. Steve Brandon, Ed Viles with you. Willie Hill will be the deep man for Tulsa Musgrave. 19 of 36 passing, 286 yards, two touchdowns. He's also rushed for a touchdown, and that score is exactly 24 inch. Hayes, kickoff. Fumble oh, yes. and recovered at the 18-yard line. Another look at that rushing touchdown. Well, they see him roll out. It's designed as a pass, really. He's looking, once he makes a fake there, he's got the guard pulling across. You can see, let's go call it, pull it across to lead the play. Now he sees the opening and he ducks up right inside. Knows he didn't have far to get into the end zone. Now, Steve, every football game has a crucial part. I think right now with 12.25 to go into football, this is extremely important for Tulsa. They have to get something going offensive. Their defense has been on the field a long time. They're kind of wearing down. Their offense has to do something with the football on this drive. Dylan Malloy on the white outs. Single back is Adam. And he gets about two yards to the 20. He's had a good third quarter, but they haven't had the ball much here in the fourth quarter. David Cassano made the tackle. Excellent against the run. Well, let's take a look at the second half statistics. Of course, they were stopped on fourth down on that first possession. They were down in the, in the territory. Then the next two times they've had touchdown. Look at the number of plays. 21 plays here in the second half. Andy Connor, Darrell Singleton, and Eric Castle in now on second and eight for Oregon's defense. Brutally marks out the signal. Again, it's Adams. Again, a two-yard pickup. Defense is swarming there. Rory Derry, the safety, came up and stopped him. Well, we're running those two plays. They put an extreme amount of pressure on Rubley on this particular third down call. He's going to have to put the ball up in the air, probably. And if he doesn't make this completion, well, it's going to be three and out. There's a holding play up penalty on this on Maybe the a call. procedure, I think, on the flag. I saw one indication of that. Well, let's see what the penalty is. They probably might even turn it down. Well, what a pressure third down situation because if they don't pick this one up, that means there'll be three plays and out, and Oregon's offense is just excited on that sideline. They've got their fans all jumping up and down. The players are trying to get their fans into the game, and it's a crucial third down play for T.J. Rubley. Brian Thompson, number 83, a freshman Richard from Tulsa, has brought into play. He does work to get over very well. Slot man is Beaner. The ball might have been picked off. Yes, number 12, Eric Castle. Oregon's ball, Eric Castle, but there is a flag down. Castle has four interceptions at that stage. Might be offsides. According to some of the indications we've seen. Let's wait for the official. Al well, Ford. This is the call. This is a big call. Offside defense, five yard penalty replay, third down. Whew, that was a big penalty pulled, call. They just pulled a stake out of Tulsa's heart on this drive. Wow, was that a big, big penalty call to give Tulsa the opportunity? What an interception that was, though. That's just a great defensive play. There's not a lot of good athletes in that secondary for Oregon, just natural ability. Yeah, Castle's a freshman red shirt. Six foot three, 210 pounds. So third and two again from the Tulsa Golden Hurricane 26 yard line. Adams spins, fights, he may be short. No, yeah, he didn't make it. Short. Did not Matt Labonte among the tacklers on the play. From the secondary, Daryl Reed came up for Oregon. Cassano's always around the action. So is Joe Farwell. Yeah, 
They may measure it, but I don't think this is. I don't even think this is close. Don't think it's close. Oregon was stopped on their try on fourth down. They had to turn the ball over on downs. And as the chain gang comes in. Ooh, closer than I thought it was. Ooh, they yeah. make it by the nose of the football. Ooh, I didn't think it was that close. I really didn't think they made it. The Adams a lot wow. of credit. Each team with three turnovers. Bad spot. I guess I say since I called it was a bad spot by the official. Huh, <laughs> Steve? <laughs> Oregon well, didn't get much argument. Boy, did they need that first down, though, to keep their defense over there and give it some rest. That, again, that offside penalty, big, crucial play for Oregon. They've got their big backs in there. Bratcher has joined Adams in the backfield. One of the rare times of the set. pro set. And that time, Adams spins to the 30-yard line, a pickup of two, but they're eating the clock. The game is tied. 10.30 to go in the football game. Well, they're still going to have to have some big plays. They're not going to take this ball and jam it down Oregon still from an offensive running standpoint. They have not had that kind of success with the running game. They're going to have to mix it. They might get away with the play-action pass, but at this point, the running game is not going to get it done for Tulsa. Oregon's been penalized five times, 49 yards. Tulsa once for 15. Second and eight. Maybe setting up some kind of throwback pass where the fullback will go up there and then throw it back to the quarterback. They haven't shown anything like that yet. Draw to Adams, finds some running room. Gets the first down and is tackled at the 43 by Eric Castle, number 12, for the white uniform Ducks. Well, watch this hole open up. Good blockage out there. We've been talking about the fact that they've been struggling, but they really opened this hole up. And again, the cutback factor was involved. They cut back off the of one block. See the block on number 37. Good job by Gus Spanos getting out there and doing an excellent job on Kearns. And Adams did a great job of cutting off that block. Interior line on offense for Tulsa's bigger than Oregon's defense. 74 carry, 24 carries, 71 yards for Adams. And now Adams again. Spins away, gets a couple of yards. Or he's wiped down by Joe Farwell. I think Adams has now passed Derek Ellison as the number six all-time rusher at Tulsa. And he's just a junior, has another year to go. He's a workhorse, as you can see, he was over 1,000 coming in, 25 carries tonight for 75 yards and two touchdowns. They got to have some kind of trick play off of this where they take the ball to him and throw it back and throw a pass somewhere along the line. On second and nine, it's the extra time defense with Singleton and Cashel in there. Big rush! Rubley gets away, throws it to Adams, and they lose a yard because standing right there was Mark Hearns. Let me tell you what, Mark Hearns did a great job. That was that middle screen again, but Hearns just stayed home, played his position, did his job, read the play beautifully. Now they're coming up again with a big key third down and 10 situation. Great instinct sums up Mark Hearns, but he's only 218 pounds as a senior at 6'2", and that's too small to play linebacker in the pros. Well, Maybe you saved it. Well, he's also a very smart, he's a smart player. You know, the guy who calls your defensive adjustments has to be smart. Yeah, third and 11. You hear the duck calls from the fans below the booth there. Play action fake. Rubley drills a shot, and it's going to be close to a first down as it's complete. Making the tackle on Archie Malloy was Daryl Singleton. Well, he did a good job of getting that one when he needed it. Little play action fake, comes back and set the He drills the ball. Watch him get that in there to McVay. McVay had to get up to about, the, well, it's going to be close enough. Let's take a look at it. It's McVay, I inadvertently called him a boy. Dan Bitson, we know he's enjoying the game. He'd rather be playing, but they're short. You saw by how much. Well, when you're going for an upset, this might be the time to, to go for it. Well, I'll tell you, that's about the length of somebody's thumb. Well, because their defense hasn't stopped Oregon the last couple of times. I think Coach Rader says, hey, we, we need to keep the ball and see if we can pick up this first down. Bratcher in in the backfield for Tulsa. Number 50, Chris Lupo, nose guard, is in for Oregon. He's working on his Masters in Business Administration as a 3.39 grade out. Fourth and one, Adams. It depends where they mark it. Depends on the spot. This depends on the spot. Oregon players think they didn't make it. Most of the Tulsa players disagree. And think it's the other way. Well, it was a gutsy call by Coach Raider. Give him a lot of credit for making the call. Tied at 24 with 7.48 to go in the game. And 
everybody once again. Look at him, look at that. Show him. So each team has turned it over on down once this game. We have 7.48 to go in the football game at the Independence Bowl. Tied at 24. Before you buy insurance, examine the evidence. A one company agent can only offer you the policies his company sells. But independent agents represent several companies. They can offer you the right policy at the right price because they have more policies to choose from. A one company agent or an independent agent? The evidence is clear. Look for the symbol of your independent agent in the yellow pages. You're more than one company agent. The canoe message. C, come on over. A, alone. N, now. O, E, etc. Oh, canoe, canoe? The cologne by Dana. Wear it. She'll get the message. Today's Duracell battery lasts up to 30% longer than the one from a few years back. Duracell. You can't top the copper tank. This is really weird. I have to shampoo a lot. And every time I do, my hair gets wet, but my scalp gets dry. Tight and itchy. The more I shampoo, the drier it can get. Now I can't stop shampooing, but I can use this. New dry scalp shampoo from Head & Shoulders. Made a different way, so it doesn't dry out your scalp like those other guys can. Try Head & Shoulders' new dry scalp shampoo and help wipe out dry scalp. We thought we were cold. That's the Oregon broadcasters up there. Todd McKim, Jerry Allen, they're up there. <laughs> Ooh, it's got to be cold up there. Yeah, it has to Frank be cold Rogers up there. With them. Yeah, they're on the roof. They had to build an auxiliary roof for them. It's first and ten for the Ducks on their own 47. It's tied at 24, and Obi makes a diving catch, but his knees are down. He can't get up, and he's right back to the line of scrimmage. You know, see, a lot of people make second guess Coach Raider for going for that on fourth down. But I really thought it was a good time. You have to have a feel for your football team when you're on that silence. He's just stepped in the sand saying, well, he should have punted and did this. But his defense had not played well, in fact, this entire uh, half. The last two times they've driven for touchdown, he said, we've got to make it. We've got to keep our offense on the field. Now his defense has to rise to that occasion. But I think you give him credit for feeling, having a feel for the flow of the game. Bell and Barry in the I formation for Oregon. Slot to the left. Derek LaBelle, good, good. Action up the middle for Oregon. The second half they've been going that way. Some good trap blocking and counter. Well, they're doing a good job at the line of scrimmage and controlling the line of scrimmage. The offensive line using that size in there. Dykes and Cusco and Hall all doing an excellent job. Scott Boatwright is in there at the center position now. He had been their starter. They've been out with an ankle injury, so he's back in there playing out there. Derek LaBelle, 14 rushes tonight, 61 yards. 24 apiece to score. Raiders said if both his backs could carry 20 times the game, they'd be in great position. Well, Adams has carried over 20. OB in motion. Play fake again. Musgrave has a wide open receiver, Hargain, at the 30 yard line. Making the tackle, Lenny Williams. The senior, the Wagner of the Holland. Well, again, it's just amazing the way they spread this passing game around. Very back, good protection. Again, look at the protection. Look at the amount of time he has. He will get open. An opportunity to work around. And it's also sitting in that zone coverage. And if you get protection, sometimes it's hard to get cover everybody up in those zones. Hargain and Reitzig having a tremendous night as Kurt Dykes is leaving. He's just that Mr. Rock of Gibraltar in there. Tedersall comes in to replace him. And now Lavelle going left, spinning close to a first down at the 20-yard line of Tulsa. Kaanapu and Koonsman. Good blocking for them. Also David Collinsworth. Look at the guard and tackle pull. See him pulling going across the line of scrimmage there? Leading the play up through there. 73, Koonsman was leading the play. Look at 73 and 75. Collinsworth, the guard and the tackle, pull up the right side all the way across to the left to open up the hole. Remember, Tulsa had a 24 to 10 lead. And we got 59. Andy Sunu is in there. And really, they've used, basically, you can almost look at them using about nine or 10 offensive linemen. I think they really have worn Tulsa down here in the second half of the football game. 
both these teams could have had much better records. It's unfortunate they lost some games down the stretch that they felt they had already had won. They outplayed the opposition, couldn't hold on to the games. And part of it was because their defense has gotten worn down a little bit. First and 10 from the 20 for Oregon on Tulsa's 20. And Latin Berry on the carry for the Oregon Ducks picks up about three or four on the play. Just driving it right at it now and again. Dykes coming back in right away. Out one play. They're really alternating this offensive line and keeping fresh people in there for this running game. Latin Berry shows how strong and fast and resilient he is. He goes all out in practice. He missed four games because of an injury, but otherwise his stats would be even bigger. Play fake again. Wales with a big rush, throws to the outside. That's to the tight end for Oregon, Merton. And he's inside the 10, he should have a first down. That's his second catch of the night. Well, Musgrave did a great job avoiding that sack and avoiding the rush and then picking up the, the receiver and getting it to Merton. By all means, he should have been trapped. Watch him, little play action fake right there. He avoids the rush, gets back up and puts the ball down in there. And Richard Wales had a chance at him, but he didn't finish the play. Going to be sacked for a big loss. It's now first and, well, goal. First and goal from the nine for the Ducks. Gives it to Lavelle. Derek Lavelle squirting through down to the two-yard line. Briscoe making the tackle. Lavelle did an excellent job of cutting that back. It was going to look like the play is going to go to the left. But watch him bring it back right here. Watch him cut back. Look for the open spots. Look there for the opening. Job, the offensive line. Todd Gadsden was in there leading that play. They're just using a lot of offensive, different offensive linemen on this drive. Only the tight end Burton has two catches for 19 yards. And Lavelle, look at the difference in the rushing now. Jeff Thomason, another tight end, is in for Oregon. Second and goal from the two, trying to get back on top. Pitch out. Barry leading the blocking. It doesn't do any good as Lavelle is stopped. The Tulsa defense doing a nice job getting over there. Well, they did a good job, but he still got it down in there very close. Looked like he was going to be stopped at about the two or three yard line, but he's down to about that one yard line right now. Cornerback Greg Jones coming up there. There's Liam Hayes using that heater. He's the kickoff man. McCallum is the regular point after and field goal man. Hey, when Hayes was here a couple of years ago, it was 57 degrees when he was here with Washington when they beat Tulane. Third and goal from half a yard out for Oregon. Well, they got to be going straight ahead with that offensive line and the lead block going in there. No, he fell out of the And recovered by, I think it's Oregon. Tulsa was all around that ball and couldn't come up with it. Looked like Tulsa had it in their hands. Looked like he slipped in the grass coming out from underneath there. Now you got to go for the field goal, of course, to put your team ahead, I believe. You know, the Oregon defense was off the bench ready to play. Take a look at this. He fell down. He slipped his, his cleats kind of as he was trying to make the reverse pivot. Boy, how uh, Tulsa didn't get the... Let's see it again. Here it again. Now watch his foot catch. See catch coming out of there? Now there's the loose ball. Why did, you know what? The official ruled that he was down. That would have been That's a replay. That there would have been a replay situation. There's the field goal try by McCallum. It's good. And Oregon goes back on top. His second field goal of the night. 27-24. The official had to the official right. You you missed it for Mr. Official. That player is right. You see, the official apparently thought that the ball was down. We'll get more into that after this break with 3.07 to go and Oregon leading by three. Dull. 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 Sharp. Dull. Sharp. Sharp. Dull. Sharp. Sharp. Dull. Sharp. Dull. Dull. Sharp. Sharp. Sharp people wear sharp watches. Bo knows baseball. Bo knows football. Bo knows basketball, too. Bo knows tennis? Bo knows running! No. <laughs> Bo 
Custom Auto Detailing in Mountain View will make your car showroom new again, but don't confuse real auto detailing with a simple inside-outside wash. Look, Motorsports Custom Auto Detailing in Mountain View will do all this, everything, for the incredibly low price of only $119. Mention TV36 will clean your engine free, a $32.95 savings on top of the low price. Protect the resale value of your car. Take it to Motorsports Custom Auto Detailing on El Camino in Mountain View, one block north of San Antonio. Call 415-948-2900. Push it, click it, press it, lick it, tune it in, turn it on. This is what you watch it on. Any way you work it, integrate your circuit of the city. Circuit City. Come to the place you're welcome. Technology with a heart. Welcome to Circuit City, where service is state-of-the-art. At Circuit City, we get higher customer satisfaction ratings than any other specialty home electronics and appliance chain. Welcome to Circuit City, where service is state-of-the-art. 24 our score. Oregon has one timeout left. Tulsa has two. We have three minutes to go, and Oregon leads by three. First and ten from the 32-yard line for Rubley, who drills one over the middle, and almost a spectacular catch by the tight end, Treat. But he just couldn't hang on to it. He's gone to the tight end. He laid himself out. He thought he might go to the tight end a little bit more than because of the weather conditions. He used that tight end across the middle somewhat even easier path. Whack attack is back. Is Lou. You know, the West Coast didn't get hit by this Arctic freeze. I think even up in the Northwest, they're in the 40s and 50s. <laughs> Oregon's first ball in 26 years, and they come down. It's hey, been zero. a good one, though. What a game we've had. It has been a great game. Both these teams are to be commended. Nelson trying to get back in it. Rupley fires a rocket, and what a catch! There must be a gallon to stick him on his hands to be able to hang on to that one, but it wasn't. It was just great play by McVeigh, Marcus McVeigh. A former beer cornerback at Tulsa when he started. Yeah, they're going to go probably uh, with the hurry-up type offense now with 2.48 to go. He drilled that one. Ray, an excellent catch. And into the game with only 15 catches at four today. Yeah, you can see the clock. Todd McGuire, the center, is marking out some line instructions. Ray had three catches. Ray 34 yards. Rubley flushed out of there, gets away from Labonte, and overshoots his man Malloy. Does stop the clock at 2.24 to go in the game with Oregon up by three. Well, good job by Castle staying with his coverage. If Castle hadn't stayed with his coverage, that would have been a big gainer. Flushed him out of the pocket. Rubley tried to get it down there, but Castle again stayed with his coverage. Yeah, this has been a fine football game, dude. You couldn't want a better bowl game than this. Both teams wide open, a lot of action, a lot of excitement, a little bit of everything. Lock punt. Good gutsy field calling. Goal. Good calling by both sides. Both, both coaching staff made great calls. Second and ten from the 45 of Tulsa. They're down by three. Play action fake to Adams. Chased by Jerry. Throws it down deep. Holden almost picked it off. An over the shoulder interception attempt on the pass intended for Brian Thompson, number 83. Yeah, Thompson kind of stopped on that play. I don't know why he continued going on downfield. There was a little bit of miscommunication. See Brian Thompson, you see number 83 stop there for some reason. And that might be a little bit of inexperience. Again, that's where you, that's where you miss a uh, Dan Bitson who would have been in there playing on that under those circumstances. Good 
the duck calls in full force. Rupley 17 to 33, 183 yards, a couple of interceptions tonight. Tight end Freak goes in motion. And incomplete. He threw it in between his two receivers, Malloy and Freak. Well, it's going to come down to fourth down, and I think he's got, the coach will be forced to go for it on this fourth down situation because there's only two minutes and 12 seconds to go in the ball game. The Ducks defensive linemen have those ears pinned back, and they're ready to charge. Well, the Ducks are playing a lot of man for man in the last uh, series here with two safeties back behind them in case someone breaks loose. They're playing man for man underneath with two safeties back there backing them up. Brantley comes in on this with a timeout now called by Tulsa Brantley, number 85, comes in from a two-point stance on the interior line as a fourth down lineman when Oregon goes with pass protect defense. Well, it's a good call, good timeout taken by Tulsa here, too. This is a, obviously, this could be the play of the game. If they don't complete this one, the game will be over. It gives them a chance to talk it over the sideline, give a chance for Ruby maybe to get settled down. He's just throwing a couple quick passes here that just quite wasn't the poise that he normally has. Well, well called timeout. On the other side, you see what's going on. You see him talking to Kearns, the linebacker, Danny Schuler, the defensive coordinator. That's him talking to him, telling him what to expect. Other coaches and listen to what you're talking about. And the biggest thing he's telling them is tell those defensive linemen to get some pressure on the quarterback. Every defensive coach says, tell those defensive linemen to get to the quarterback because they know that's the best, the best defense. The Oregon Duck Band, 260 of them, came down here from Eugene, and they're still playing as if it's the pregame. Hey, these Oregon fans have had a great time here this week, and they a lot of excitement during the course of the game. You can see them all, all down the side there. Defensively, we do have a record tied. Oldham's two interceptions ties a bowl record with many, many others. 2-12 to go. 27-24 Oregon leads. Fourth and 10 from the 45 for Tulsa. This could be their last hurrah. McVeigh in motion. Pressure on Rubley. Has to keep coming. Brantley all over it. Connor after him. Williams after him. Back at his own 20. All of Fran Tonkin did. He gets away. He's, he has nine lives, but not a tenth life as the Ducks swarm him under at the 20. Well, that obviously is the end of the play, but give Oregon secondary great credit. All of them stayed with their coverage. They were playing man for man with a couple of safeties backing up. There was just no place for Ruby to go with the football. And of course, eventually you're going to get sacked regardless of how much you. So 156 to go in the game. The score 27-24. We'll be back for the closing moments of the Independence Bowl after this. Seltzer Plus cold medicine. It works. It's fast. Alka Seltzer Plus. The fizz works fast. All the sports news you want, up to the minute, 24 hours a day, every day. Scores, trades, injury reports, highlights. Just some information coming your way February 1st, 1990, with the launch of the Mislu Sports News Network. Call your local cable operator for channel information in your area. Miss Lou Sports News Network, launching nationwide on February 1st. Isn't it amazing how suddenly girls can throw? Sports can't make you healthy. Sports can't make you strong. Sports can't teach you how to win the game of life unless you get to play. The Women's Sports Foundation. We need your help. That's the second half for Tulsa. They turned the ball over on downs their last two possessions. Bonnie got credited for a six and a half sack. And here come the Ducks. Pavel. 16, 151 to go. You know, it's cold. There could be a spectacular play. This game is still not truly over, though Oregon can keep running the clock as Tulsa's called a timeout. It's last. Well, I think that's their, that's their last timeout. Of course, I'm sure Oregon will keep the ball on the ground. Been a good football game, though, Steve. Good Lord, we had a certain, you know, great 
at halftime, 24, and all of a sudden, the Oregon woke up here in the second half, and they really took charge of this of this football game. We're down 24 to 10. Considering the weather conditions, I think it was well played. You're going to have some turnovers in a cold weather like this, but these two teams prepared. They played hard. And there's, of course, a look at the timeouts remaining. Tulsa doesn't have any. So can't stop that clock. And, and if Rich Brooks has to call one, unless it's to let some seniors play to run out the clock, he's not, they're going to head for the gas. No, he's going to be very happy to get out of here. If he gets out here with a win, he's going to say, hey, we give a lot of credit to Tulsa for the way they played this evening. Oregon trying to finish its season at eight and four, the most wins under Rich Brooks in his 13 years. 1.49 to go, second and six from the 16. Valiant effort by Tulsa's defense tonight. Lavelle is stopped in the backfield by Richard Wales. And Sidney Prince was there too, 48. Well, Tulsa, Tulsa had another timeout left. Remember, we had gotten this. Is, this is uh, maybe they gave. Felt a little sorry for him. They gave an extra oh, timeout out there. By quarters. Now you see how it changes. Oregon dominating in the fourth quarter, where they had to make it. Of course, there was that controversial non-fumble by Oregon. But when we saw the replay, technically Musgrave's knee was down while he was still cradling the ball with one hand, and that's when the play ended. Right, that's exactly right. There's oh. the backup quarterbacks, Nelson and Brothers. And all they're saying right now to Musgrave is tell those backs to make sure they hang on to the football. Put both arms around it. You don't need any fumbles. Make sure you get the center quarterback exchange. Our much thanks goes to Don Tomkowski of the uh, Tulsa Sports Information Department. He's been most helpful. He and his staff uh, from Tulsa and also at Oregon. Steve Hellyer and Dave Williford have been tremendous uh, help to us. Great cooperation from the coaching staff, helping us prepare for the game. Yeah, it's been a very good atmosphere around here this week. I'll tell you what, the athletic director and the coach here at Tulsa, both born during the Eisenhower administration. You know, any <laughs> of those young guys, Rick Dixon, of course, Dave Brader, they go out to the left, right it Inside the 10, he gets a first down. They'll be able to eat the clock some more. That pretty well should do it. There's a minute and 30 to go on the clock. The clock will restart once they move the change and continue to roll. Joe Tattersall coming in for the offensive line. A lot of guys getting some playing time. Todd Anapu. Kolya Teff coming in, but that's just not to give him a, a, some playing time. He's This is his forte inside the 10-yard line. As you mentioned that record earlier. Well, I don't think we'll see him put the ball up in the air now, though. They've got this thing wrapped up. The only way they can lose it is that they make a big mistake. Minute 10 to go in the game. Oregon by three. And it is Latin Berry down to the six yard line as the clock continues to run. Dan Terabrella makes the tackle for Tulsa. And Tulsa can't stop it now. Under a minute, 55 seconds to go. Jeff Thomason coming in. They're just going to block and try to plow it through and eat the clock. Oregon leading by three, 49 seconds to go. Latin Berry coming out of the game with that extra tight end. Oregon fans give him a nice applause. Barry with 23 yards rushing. That has been invaluable tonight in the Oregon offense. There's the clock, 35 left in the game. Lavelle going to the outside, spinning, and he'll be stopped down. Yeah, that should be the last That's snap of the game. Wales. By the way, happy birthday to number 44, Doug Douglas of Oregon. 19 seconds to go. They won't have to snap it anymore. The Oregon Ducks go to 8-4. Winning the Independence Bowl, their first bowl in 26 years. Tulsa drops to 6-6, six and six, but congratulations to David Rader and his team. And this has been one of the most exciting Independence Bowls in history. Exciting, well played. You can see the teams respect for each other. Both those teams are meeting in the center of the field. They're shaking hands. And again, I think this is a great example of what football is all about. Great game, great sportsmanship. We'll be back to the Independence Bowl Stadium in Shreveport to wrap it up. With the final score, Oregon 27 and Tulsa 24. Rather switch than itch. So I switch.